guys, journey. welcome to today's show. So glad you could be here with us today. Yes, today we're going to be talking about not giving up and the importance of hope, which we think is a really important thing to talk about right now. Uh, but before we talk about hope, uh, we're going to talk about our week and what we like to call adventures in screenwriting. Uh, Lauren, how was your week? Uh, my week was good. I think we haven't done the show for a couple of weeks, so I'm going to talk about like the last two weeks. Um, I I had really good couple of weeks. Um, I had, you know, as usual, I had some generals. Um, it's always interesting to me, the meeting that I think like went the best is the one that I don't hear back from. <laughs> like I, my my uh, ability to gauge uh, amazing and mediocre somehow got off somewhere. I think part of it might be Zoom, you know, the Zoom of it. Yeah. Um, but um, I had a couple of really great ones, uh, made great connections with producers, um, and I'm working on some projects. I got really inspired by one of them, and I sat down in like a day or two and wrote a whole pitch for a TV show. I got some feedback some, from some of my insanely smart writer friends, and I'm uh, waiting for a last round of notes for my manager, and then I'm going to send it to the producer. Be like, this, this is the show we should make. So I'm really excited about that. And then also the um, big thing that I'm doing, have been doing, working on is uh, I'm finally ready to take the animated show I've been working on out to the market to pitch it. Yay. How long? So, How long has it been? Can you say? Uh, six months. It's been about six months. Um, and it's been uh, a really interesting experience for me because it's a show that was created by someone else. She wrote this amazing script and a Bible. And then they brought me in to partner with her to show run. And so that's been a really interesting new experience because, you know, it has to hit me creatively in my heart and in my soul. And she and I have to really connect. And um, I think it's been a really great experience, but, you know, challenging for me on a professional level in a lot of ways. But I feel really good about the show and what it has to say and what it can do. And it's super different than anything that's on TV right now. So I think, I think we have a chance to sell it. And, uh, you know, I'm like multiple offers. Come on, come in. I'm embracing all the multiple offers, but um, I'm really excited to get the schedule and pitch it. And um, yeah, so I've been. Oh, I can't wait to hear what happens. I know. Hopefully, it's good news in like three weeks. I'll be like, we sold the show, and then I'll be like, oh my god, we sold the show, <laughs> um, which is always like the next place. Um, but um, luckily, I've been feeling um, really inspired, and I was a little busy, so. Um, it was easy to stay focused, right? And not get bogged down on what's going on in the world. But um, Meg, how was your week? Weeks? I do think, I've been thinking about why I keep myself so busy. And I do think that's what it is. It helps me focus. It also helps keep the anxiety at bay because you're just too freaking busy to be anxious. You just don't have time to even hear the chatter. Um, I've kind of gone overboard with the busyness right now. Like it's at DEF CON, you know, impossible. Um, <laughs> but it's all good. I feel very lucky and blessed to have so much to do. But um, today, uh, this in the last, since the last time we were all together, uh, I, myself and Jonathan, uh, gave our producer, our TV pilot. And Ooh. I think the reason I was so nervous is because I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> is that you know, like, the, well, you feel more vulnerable. Marks. I felt more vulnerable because I liked it and I was so afraid it suddenly I'm so attached to it and please don't say anything. You know, my baby's ugly. Um, and I knew it was still rough and we were bringing him in early and, um, and I also, uh, it's not in my wheelhouse in terms of, I, I can world build for sure. It's just not my, it's not my favorite go-to thing. Um, you know, action sequences that I can do these things. I've done these things, but I'm always a little bit more feeling more vulnerable about that. And plus I respect this producer and his perspective, which also all of these things are great and make you nervous when you can something in, um, and we got the notes back because of stuff going on in his life. He didn't have a time to tell us the stuff he liked. Mm. He just sent us all the notes, what we could do, yeah. uh, which is hard. You know, that's hard um, uh, because it, you, you don't know, does it, okay, he's totally disappointed in this draft, um, which later when I asked him directly, so you're disappointed, he was like, no, my God, no. And then he started listing the stuff he likes. So sometimes you have to ask, like, just ask, did you like anything? Because it's just as important to know what people like, because that means that's what's working, that go towards that, that, that that's working, don't change that. So I right. gave myself 24 hours, it helps to have a partner that you can talk to about it. I tried to get the big picture. Um, and you know, and then at one point I was like, okay, I have to face this and really 
not be afraid to look at what he's saying and what doesn't work. And what do I agree with and what I don't, which is a big thing for me because coming from producing and development, I, my brain has been trained to take the note and you don't always right. take the note as the showrunner. Like, is that the show? Does that make it a different show? For example, there was a character issue and I was like, I don't know that that's the character I want to write. I'm not even saying it's not a good note, but it actually changes his character, which changes the relationship, which kind of actually changes the show. And more importantly, in talking to my writing partner, I was like, I don't want to tune in every week and watch that guy. Right. You know, like I think I could write him, but is that what I want to tune into? Is that what I want my audience to tune into? Um, and so it's kind of like, okay, what's the note under the note? Why are we getting that note about him? What am I missing in this character? Which by the way, it's the same character that I got the note on before. Do you remember when I had? Yeah. I was still yeah. digging it out. Um, but I found myself able then to move from the inner critic, which is kind of, you know, not the most positive uh, person in your head right. to curiosity, right? And, and, and made that shift over and really tried to be conscious about it, which is okay. What can I be curious about um, right. and really look at this? Um, and the other thing I realized I was doing that I thought might be helpful to some of our listeners is I really, having worked at Pixar, it really, because you have to watch it over and over, it really trained my brain at some point in the process, especially once you've got a script and you're getting notes, is really try to look at it as something that they will shoot. Like it's not a piece of literary, literary document. It's something they're going to shoot how could they shoot this? Would it be exciting? What will it, you know, like, and I don't mean just like the craft of writing visually on the page. I mean, like, literally, is this a cool scene? Mm -hmm. <laughs> have you yeah. seen this? Have we seen this scene before? Um, is this, are these, are, is this character, is this dialogue something that an actor, when you hand them the script, is going to be like, great, I can't wait. Is the audience, when they turn on it, it on, on their, on their TV, what are they going to see? What is the director going to think? I try to think about those things and it helps me kind of get out of my own way a little bit. Um, yeah. And the other way I got inspired is I read some scripts um, in this genre uh, just to see how kind of the masters have done it. And again, try to get back into the fun of it. I started watching a couple of movies just to reattach to the fun, right, yeah. of the project. Because sometimes when you get notes and you've done it so many times and you've done an outline and you've done a treatment, you're like, what am I doing? What am I, what is this? Oh yeah, it's a TV show. <laughs> Right. And then you get to that point where you're like, what is story? What is writing? Why is writing? What's happening? Right. You <laughs> just have to go yeah. connect back to, oh, right. This is a TV show. And I love TV shows. And what do I love about TV shows? Um, and then I also realized as busy as I am, I was feeling the pressure internally of, it's kind of a sadness that I hadn't worked on my passion project in a while. And so I just emailed the producer of that. And I was like, listen, I'm going to make a commitment that every Saturday morning for two hours, I'm going to work on this. Mm -hmm. Right. So from eight, my kids are still sleeping, right. Eight to 10 on Saturday morning, instead of working out, quite honestly. <laughs> so there's a bonus, right. I don't have to work out. <laughs> Meg, let's talk about your running. Hey, however you can, <laughs> however you can get it done. You know, and then of course, it doesn't mean like I write, I sit down and write my passion project and it's just like amazing. No, immediately I can't find a character. I'm like, oh my God, I've seen this character that I just wrote like a million times. And he's just literally like a third supporting character, but I got stuck because I'm like, well, he sucks. Like I've seen this store owner a million times. I can't go on. Now I'm done and I only have two hours, right? And I just, I'd help to talk about it and talk it out with my husband. And I just decided, okay, this is going to be bad. This, this character's bad. And I'm just going to keep going on because I only have two hours and I need to get through here and have confidence that I will figure it out. Yeah. And it's the same thing as, you know, getting the other notes. Like I have to find some, and even if I'm faking it, quite honestly, I'm faking the confidence that I will figure it out. That if I stay in the pool long enough, right. In the inspiration pool in the banging my head against the wall. And it does happen. It's crazy, right? Like it will start to show like, okay, what if I did the opposite of what I just wrote? What happens? Like, that's always a right. good one, right? Like I made this guy very chatty, but what if he's absolutely silent and he's hard to read? Look, I right. just, you know, um, you know, it's all too long. I just had all the, the, in those two hours, it took me a long time to get past all the chatter. Like, oh my God, this is too long. But um, I well, did it. I did it. So awesome. I, was, I was happy. Awesome. Something you said on, um, I don't know if it was our last show or show before where you um, 
you were struggling with something and you just kept writing and you knew it was bad and you just kept writing and you just sat there. And that really um, inspired me because I tend to get very emotional when, uh, you know, when I can't find it or I'm not inspired or all those magic writer things. And then I bail. I need a break. I'll go exercise. I'll eat a cheese sandwich. You know, all the things I tell myself. But instead, I was sort of, I, you know, I met with this producer. She had an idea. I was like sort of, you know, interested in it. And I just sat down and I made myself write like what if it's this character and and I just put something on the page and then gave to a friend to read and then we talked about it and then I got even more excited and then I did more writing and then I just kept doing that and then like in three days I had a pitch or two days I had a pitch you know like an outline that I got to keep refining so I had something that clay but what you said and that that idea of just stay there even though you know it's terrible right like just stay in it it was it was really powerful. And I know, Meg, you have been saying that to me since probably the day we met, like <laughs> way back in the, you know, last decade, right? But like, um, for whatever reason, I was ready to hear it in a really like body, brain, chemistry way. So that I, and then I, and then I, I made something, you, you know, something. and it, it wasn't the thing I was supposed to be working on, you know, but it, but it is a thing now. And it's something I really believe in. And I, and I want to see this TV show. Oh, so, and you know, yeah. that, and, and you know, sometimes people think, well, that's when I'm writing a spec. That's when I'm going to have to just stay in, even though it sucks. But I got to tell you, even I, I've had experiences where you go to pitch to get a job and you meet maybe the director and he gives you feedback about what do this, don't that, I, you know, make it was based on IP. And I was like, okay, let's go do that. And then I come up with a pitch and then I talk to him again and then you do more. And then I'm like, okay, here it is. And now here come the executive, here comes the producer, the director's producer. Now he has a different idea. Okay, go again, go again. And half the time I'm like, oh my God, is this just bad? Or, and you're, you're doing all these push throughs every time. Every time there's a little push through of like, oh my God, I don't know, just sit here and figure it out because you have to have the next phone call. And then the executives come in and now they have, like it is this process of, yeah. even at pitching stage of, okay, well, what if, that character you suggested, we take that out. And I'm like, okay, well then that'll fall down and that'll fall down. Could I do that? Is that the same movie? Do I care about that anymore? I don't know. Maybe this is just now a lump of nothing. Uh, push, 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 push. Oh, wait, we could do that because now it might even be better because right. of this push, 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 push. So that it is the process, right? Like it's not yeah. just for specs. It's for when you're going to pitch. It's for uh, every aspect. It's like creativity right yeah. um and people think oh when you're quote unquote an a-list that's not happening it happens every time right. every time and I do think there is pressure from historical writer for me like when I see like Jane Austen manuscripts that are handwritten with like little notes and pins in them or something that's been typewritten like I, I imagine that they just came out of their head into the typewriter right they're just like it just comes out and that pressure of not being able to perform at that level is so intimidating you know that and you know although when I hand write stuff it's like illegible and there's cross outs and throw crumpled and finding old crumpled papers like it doesn't it doesn't look like these you know gorgeous records you know that we have of what these older writers did so that too can that's this thing in the back of my brain okay, like, let's do that short film of like she wrote that for the record and never showed you all the cross out right. and crap that she did and all the walks she took and thought about it for 17 hours and changed it right. in her head and like I'm sure that you know it's it's their own version of putting the best foot forward right like right I, yeah I don't believe it I just don't no, I don't mean, I know that they, that must be what that is, but at the same time, you know, when I was a young college student studying English literature, that's what we were presented with, right? Like the, you know, the best version of them. So that sort of, I have to get rid of that, you know, working at Pixar where the movie is in multiple pieces and the script is all over the place and like sort of corralling it and like forming it, you know, um, I get that. I get that, you know, but it's still, it's, but it's, it's still pressure. in there. It's pressure still from there. the past. <laughs> yes, you have to tell that voice to knock it off. Yes. Maybe now I can hear that from you this time. Maybe now that one will get in. Like every episode, I'm like, okay, what of Meg is going to say this week that like finally sinks in? <laughs> um, um, anyway, so yeah, that was that was a little for week. our weeks. Yeah. Uh, hope you guys had a good week. Uh, um, Jeff. Meg, when you had mentioned getting notes from an executive, I immediately thought of the, you know, the mentality that writers go through, which is, of course, fuck me, fuck you, what's next? Right. And 
I'm just picturing you in this meeting, getting those notes and immediately just retaliating. But as right as we have to keep it inside, right? Well, thank God. I mean, it was just in a, it was just, thank God, within the document. You know, I don't, when you're in the room, you're like this. <laughs> phone calls are, phone calls are good. Like huh? speaker phone with your partners are okay. Cause you could be like making the face like, oh my God, but you know. And the irony is I'm, I'm a note giver as well. I know that, you know, a large majority of these notes are dead right, right? right. Uh, but it doesn't matter. I, I do think that would be really cool to do an episode about giving notes because we did the episode about getting notes, but as writers, we're often asked to give notes. And personally, and I'd love to hear y'all's take on this, but starting with what you liked, I do feel like it's very important, personally. It's essential. Yeah. So I think like there's part of me that feels like if you're giving feedback and you're not at least highlighting some parts of the script that are really working, you're not necessarily doing your job as the note giver. No, for sure. Because listen, you have to get that person's brain out of survival. Yeah. Right. They have to feel safe with you. Right. So, and why are we partnered on this? Because we both like this and you did this well, but yeah. uh, I'd love to give, uh, and you know, the other thought thing we thought was we have a young writer who's willing to possibly get notes on air. Mm -hmm. Right. So you could actually, you know, you guys could all read it and then we could, you know, so that's another fun thing we could do in the future. Yeah. A lot of exciting ideas in the pipeline that we're excited to see in the future. So, um, Speaking of, you know, our audience and all of you guys listening right now, we are just obsessed with you guys. Um, we got Meg DeLorean fan art in the um, Facebook group this week. Um, Ryan, I sent you the photo if you want to show everyone. I sent it in the Zoom chat. Hopefully it worked out. Um, but it's just a sign, like, we built this community of, like, earnest, wonderful, brilliant film nerds, which is, like, just the best. And you guys write us these beautiful reviews. Um, this comes from... Carrie Burness, who uh, uh, at the end of June said, I'm so happy I found this. I found this via the Ehrman fundraiser Zoom thing. Thank you for everything you've shared and I look forward to listening to more. And we look forward to bringing you more as well. So thank you. Thank, thank you so much. And um, I mentioned the Facebook group. It's so fun to be interacting with you guys. We've like really kind of found our community, our tribe in there. So if you want to join the Facebook group, make sure you do that. We're constantly posting important announcements, show related content in there. That's the Screenwriting Life Facebook group. And of course, you can email us all of your questions at thescreenwritinglife at gmail.com. And we'll answer those on air for future episodes. So um, we're also posting stuff on Facebook, like, um, so, you know, tools for you guys to use. And here's yeah. a list of questions. And have you thought of this? And so that's how we can get to you more directly. Yeah, Meg and Lorian, as you guys know, are incredibly generous. Um, and mentorship is a passion for them. And the Facebook group is where a lot of that is happening. So I'd really encourage you to join. And keep listening to the show. We're excited to bring you more episodes. Yeah, totally. All right. Shall we get into our topic this week? To the topic. Yes, which is about the importance of hope <laughs> um, yes. in a career. We've talked about in other episodes, right? Failure and that, or notes and that, how that can make you feel like you're going to die, and failure, how that can make you feel like you're going to die. But I think it's important to talk about that, the heartbreak of the career and all the things that happen, but also somehow uh, having hope that you're gonna make it work, that it's gonna happen. Like closing the gap between the reality of what you're working on and your dreams. Uh, yeah. Which is sort of how I look at it. Like how much closer am I to my dream? And sometimes I get knocked back even farther than I am now. And then sometimes I can inch forward just a little bit more. You know. And that heartbreak can happen on a micro level, right? Like, oh, I really do have to cut this character and or change them because it does make sense. And we're just killing them in five pages. So what does it matter? And yet there's a little heartbreak because I really liked him the way he was, right? Um, right? There's tiny heartbreaks within the work, but then there's really big setbacks, right? That you all the way at the other end of the spectrum is you thought you had a deal and it closed and then somehow the whole thing went away. Um, or yeah. the person that you wrote the script for actually didn't have the rights and the whole thing goes away or you get replaced as a writer or you know your expectations of who you were and where you were it's just take this radical shift right and, and that happens to everybody in every industry um but when it's, it involves art and passion and heart it can be even harder um to to, to go through that muck and yeah, and then there are the heartbreaks of like working so hard on a project and falling in love with the characters and the world and just loving being in it, and then it doesn't move forward. And then it's sort of, and then that keeps happening, right? And it's like falling in love and getting 
broken up with and falling in love and getting rejected. And it's, I got to a point, um, I don't know, it was like a month or two ago. I've had many of these points. So this is just the most recent one where I remember emailing Meg and I was like, I just, I don't know that I can keep doing this. Like, I just feel like I pull my heart out of my chest and I like lay it bare and someone comes over and drives over it with the truck a bunch of times. I'm supposed to put it back in and keep going. And I don't remember what you wrote back, but I remember it was, it was all the things, right? It was supportive, it was empathetic, but it was also like, you're a writer, this is the job. This is the reality of it, right? You have to figure out how to, how to grieve and honor that part, but also like, you gotta keep going. The persistence of it, right? And- uh, The persistence of it, yeah. yeah. I mean, the first I, step to me is to have compassion for yourself and to have kindness for yourself because if you're suffering a disappointment, you're suffering a setback, um, and beating yourself up, if that's what you need to do, then do it, but give it a time limit, right? Like right. I'm going to beat myself up until noon. Then I'm going to go have a sandwich and I'm going to cheese, gonna, cheese cheese, a cheese sandwich. <laughs> and then I'm moving on because beating yourself up is not going to do much good. Um, right. And um, versus the compassion and, you know, and, and it's really compassion ver or versus perfection compassion versus achievement, right? Like you've got these ideas in your head of who you are are based on your perfection and your achievement. Yes, that isn't absolutely. Who you are. That is not who you are. That's what you do, right? right? right. Well, in perfection, forget it. You're not getting there, but that's, that's a way to, you know, beat yourself up, um, keep yourself safe, which doesn't work by the way. Um, you know, so it's. Yeah. And I think that's what I was, that's what I was really asking for. How do I keep myself safe? Right. Right. And I can't, and in order to be able to do this, me, I can't keep myself safe. I have to keep taking my heart out of my chest in order to tell my truth, to tell the truth, to connect to an audience, to connect to my stories, right? So right. I think the, that's it, yeah. All, all you can hope is that in that truck running over your heart, um, that you're gonna evolve from it. That might be your writing that's evolving because when you have enough distance, mm -hmm. you can go back and look and see what okay. happened there in the creative that you just didn't see or your your toolbox wasn't ready yet or or you guys just thought of a two different movies, right? Or whatever mm -hmm. happened. Um, it might be personal, it might be strategy, it might be how you handled it, it might be many different things, right? But it's, you know, to me, it's first to have self-compassion and be patient with that. Like that I take lots of nature. I always, as soon as I start to feel that come up, I go take a walk. It might be getting quiet. I mean, I try to catch myself if I fall into victim, mm. right? Again, yeah. if you need to do it, do it, but have a limit on it because it's not going to get you where you got to go. Okay. Where, what was the, what's the opportunity in that heartbreak? Because I do believe everything is for a reason uh, when we're talking about this kind of thing and that there's opportunity in it. I understand you can't see it when it's happening or when right. you're too close, but when you can get back a little bit and get some distance, there is something to learn in there. And here's the thing, when your heart gets run over by a truck, whatever is down in the, in, in the insides of you, it's up and walking around, right? Like I had a moment the other day on a different project and I thought, well, I'm having a huge reaction to this. Like, I am getting really emotional and I, there is no intellectual reason why when this person said that to me, I should be getting so upset. I don't do anything on the zoom call, right? I just shut up because I'm getting really upset. But later you have to be brave enough to think about, okay, what was that? What was the feeling? Where was it in my body? And I, all this little thing came up from my childhood. Boop, right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh, there it is. Like, that's great for writing. We're writers. That little boop that came up, you know? So, you're a writer and, and when you hit these setbacks, take notes, right? And put it into your writing because all, when people say to me, will say to you as a writer, oh, I don't care, I can't feel it, I'm not attached, I don't like them, all that stuff, right? Well, it's this stuff, it's this right. stuff, it's this vulnerability that is the stuff they're looking for in your script. So it is a blessing in the setback, there's a blessing in the heartbreak because we're going to watch a character who's going to have a setback and heartbreak. That's what comp that's what a story is, right? Um, and that's that's the story I ended up writing this last week was about someone who had a huge setback. Their heart was broken in like all the ways, 
and then they have to start over not into it but they have to start over right yeah i mean in essence you um, start the yeah. hero's journey yeah. you know that heartbreak that setback you are starting the hero's journey and you're going to make a choice because remember in the hero's journey you can choose to take it or not i suggest right. if it's up and walking around take the journey we call it lava call it whatever you want right which is to evolve and look at that and put it into your writing and yes the hero's journey takes determination it does. It take, but what, think about it. Like, what do you need in a hero's journey? If you were the writer, you would want to give that character who you love and who's just had their heart broken a goal. Yes. So maybe at some point in this process, after compassion, after quiet, after being honest, going into the love, okay, now what's the goal? Is the goal during this time, even though I'm having all this pressure, maybe of making money um, and other things which are very real and practical and you do have to take care of that. I totally get that, right? But you're also probably having an identity crisis potentially, right? So what's the goal? The goal is I'm going to write. I'm going to finish that script. I'm going to take that thing that never worked and I'm going to pour all this into it. Like whatever goal you need to give yourself, that'll help keep a, the resilience that we're talking about, the persistence, motive, beacon, what, remember, reattach to why the heck you're doing this, right? Whatever image you have or, you know, for me, it's, people receiving it and being moved, you know? I remember the times that somebody walked up to me and grabbed my hand and started talking about something that so moved them or, you know, listening to people laugh, you know, to, to connect to people, strangers that way is the reason I do it, right? Because that's what I love about it. So to go back to, I, or my goal might be my character, right? Like, okay, this is up and walking around in me. I don't even know who I am anymore. But I know who this character is and I love this character. So I'm going to take all this heartbreak and I'm going to, I'm going to go put it in over there, right? Mm -hmm. Use it as the fodder. And that resilience comes to me from the goal, from the push. And again, I'm not talking about achievement, right? I'm talking right. about the art of the art, the, the life of an artist, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and that you're here to say something. You're here to put something into the world. You are a sacred conduit. And maybe the universe has said it's time for you to move off this project. Maybe the universe is saying, hey, you've been listening to me, so I'm going to give you a pretty loud message, right? Uh, go the other direction, right? Like sometimes some of my biggest disappointments when I look back, I'm like, oh my God, thank God that didn't happen. Thank right? God I didn't get that job. And I know you can't see it until 10 years later. <laughs> <laughs> but you just don't know. You just right. don't know. And if, and if, and if, but you kind of do know, don't you? Down deep in your guts, when you yeah. get quiet, that's why I'm saying self-compassion. That's why I'm saying quiet. You really have to be brave to go into the lava and are you really disappointed that this setback happened? And if you truly are, and it truly is deep heartbreak because you don't get to write that, you're a writer. Like that's, yeah, you're a writer, Yeah. right? Uh, like I was a producer and I had plenty of setbacks as a producer, but I don't know. Like I, I was upset about it, but it was more from an ego place. Ah, do you know what I mean? It, it wasn't yeah. from a deep soul place. It was more from letting yeah. people down and disappointing people. Like all oh, that's real. Yeah. But was it my soul? Right. Uh, so it's an opportunity to me. And the resilience is to reconnect into that motive, into that soul. And that that's what you're fighting for. That's why you're going to do it again. And the last thing, I just want to say one other quick thing. And I know Lauren, sorry, I'm talking so much, but, um, you also really do have to look at your work. You know, sometimes I meet young writers and they have written many, many scripts, but they're just kind of writing the same script over and over with the same problem, the same pattern of problem. And that kind of determination, I'm not like, that's not what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Like, for some people, it is actually sitting in the chair and doing it because that's what you're avoiding. And that's the determination you need, which is just work through the crap. Just don't know. And that's okay. Just pretend that it's going to get better. Right. That might be your determination after the setback. But sometimes it really is. Why is everybody passing? What is happening? Like there may be a piece of this you're not yet skilled at or looking at, or you've got a blind spot. Right. And it's the blind spot you got to go towards to really evolve the art, to evolve the writing. Right. That blind spot, maybe you're not being personal enough or I don't know what it could be. But mm -hmm. um, 
there is an opportunity if that space opens up, right? Because the project just died. So guess what? You got time, right? <laughs> to go and- That is the most optimistic interpretation <laughs> of a project dying I've heard. Congratulations, you have time to investigate your black spot. <laughs> I know, that's so crazy. And You're yeah. such an optimist. You're I'm, such an optimist. I'm a cynical optimist. It's really funny. I, uh, I'm a cynical pessimist, but I have a little bit of hope. <laughs> I know. The hope, you know, because hope is an active word. It's an action, right? And, yeah. and that action takes some discipline. Yeah. And I think that talking about that is important. Like waking up today, I didn't, I didn't want to. Like, I just like, oh, another day. It's the pandemic. You know, my kid, it's like, I just, not in like a tragically depressed kind of way, but just sort of in a like, oh, right. Like I have to get up and get coffee and walk the dog and go through the motions. And then like trying to find the piece that I can hold on to some things that's like, you know, oh, do I have a meeting today? Oh, I have the podcast today. Yay. That's exciting. I, I have action around that. Right. I take a shower, did my hair, whoop, you know, but like that will help set me up to move through the rest of the day hopefully like it's nice to have something to grab a hold of even if I have to manufacture it right and I think for me that's really important because I tend to want to protect myself so I tend to be like ah the world's on fire nothing's gonna work out it's all a shithole right but I can't I can't do that and be be successful and not like achievement successful but like sitting down and writing if I think that Right. right. Because then that's what my, my characters will all say. And like, nobody, that's, that's not what I want to explore. So I have to really like turn, find a way to get my brain in a place and my body where I can like sit down and find some joy and have some fun and not be in a crappy mood. And, and it's a struggle, honestly, like right now, especially when I'm like here in this house with all these people every day, all the time, <laughs> you know, like it, it's, it's a lot. And I think, you know, for me, it's um, writing like three paragraphs and being able to send it to a trusted friend and getting positive feedback back and like, oh, there's something here, like creating opportunities so that I can keep going. That's how I'm hopeful, right? Is that I have to figure out how to get some work done, right? And to get feedback. That for me is the critical piece. I cannot work in a vacuum. If I look at my schedule and I don't have any meetings, it's like, I get so scared. I have to make some meetings so that I have connections with other people. Um, and so that's how I am managing this, like on the daily to have hope, right? Um, just to, to manufacture connections so that I can um, keep going. Cause it's really, I'm starting to get emotional. <laughs> it's really hard for me to be alone in this environment and with the personality I have and how I like to be around people. So I feel starved, you know, starved for attention. That's me. Um, but uh, so like, that's the practical way that I am trying to keep, to hold on to hope for myself, you know, and that's about the work, but it's also like, what, what do I need? Right. Really looking at who I am, really taking a like, good look. I need attention. Well, I need feedback. That, yeah. That you know? self-knowledge is gold, right? Yeah. And these setbacks are just opportunities for more self-knowledge, right? both from a craft position, but also who you are and what you need. Mm -hmm. And that support group, really, guys, if you can, if yes, it's one person, absolutely. that's good. You know, have one yeah. person, uh, you know, the, the the buddy, it's fine. More is better, right? Because then you have more people either to give you notes or to call. And this person is really good at voicing you up. And this person's really good at saying, hey, Lorian, I got to tell you, sit your ass down. Like that person, that's, right? Like, that's what Meg is for me, by the way. I am sometimes. sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> I, I can do both. Uh, I know. So, you know, having that support system, which again, we're hoping the Facebook page is doing that for you guys. If you're feeling alone and you're out there and you just don't have that, like we are trying to be that for you. We are trying to say to you, keep going. And here's the thing, really guys, keep going doesn't mean when you finish this script, it's a genius work of genius. And suddenly you are making a million dollars. That is not how it works. That is not how nope. craft works. It's not how art works. Keep going means you finish it. You like it. You're getting good notes and it either goes off on its way, i.e. into the system somehow, either because that's contests or because you are represented and it goes off and then you go again. Right? Like it is a constant. There's for me, I have, because maybe it's because I'm a producer, it gives me energy. I like having another thing boiling that I can go dive into 
and you know maybe it's period maybe it's a different genre like there's excitement there maybe it's tv versus feature maybe it's animation but i get excited by oh my god these characters are knocking on the door they're like tell my story right so it's not like you know be determined to finish right i don't you know have to be determined to keep going yeah there's no finish <laughs> yeah. uh and you should and Try to find the excitement in that for you because that means you get to keep writing. You get to keep bringing stories into the universe. And when one either dies or it moves off into the system, listen, I have projects sitting on the shelf that went through the system and they didn't go, right? Okay, a couple of them I still want to bring back, but I might, <laughs> but I'm still moving. I'm still moving on to the next. And those characters can also give you inspiration, right? right. Because just if you're feeling really lost, sit down and just sit, who shows up? Is it a male, is it a female, is it young, is it old? Is it a creature, is it a human? Who shows up and what do they wanna say and where are they? And just let it, let that part of you, that writer write and remember and, and, and feel like, oh yeah, oh yeah. And it doesn't have to be good, who cares? There's no good, they just wanna to talk to you, right? I just said that to my writing partner. I was like, I think I just need to let him talk to me for a while. I just, I'm not hearing his voice. I'm just gonna dump. And he's just going to talk to me. I think he's mad. I don't know what he's mad about, but I think he might be mad. And that's why he's so flat. Cause I'm not letting him be mad. Right. Mm -hmm. Like whatever that is, like it's a sacred process coming from a deeper part of your soul and brain. And that can right. really give you motive once that starts coming up. Right. And don't put it, don't be like, Oh, you'll never sell. Uh, I already wrote this character, in everybody, but nobody liked it. All that judgment crap. Right. Is not good for hope. It's literally yeah. the opposite of hope. Yes. You're going to you're going to pitch an idea and someone's going to say, oh, I saw that done in this movie or I saw that done in that TV show. And it has to be like, yes, but I'm going to execute it in a different way. Yeah. You know, and that it's doesn't, be it's okay. Because, and that means, okay, maybe it's not right for you. Right. Maybe that's because this connection is not supposed to happen. Like you just need one. Yes. People, you just, you know, that you just need one person to connect and, and push that forward. And that ball goes forward. And then you go to the other one. Right. So it is, again, as long as you're being brave and really looking at where you need to learn your skills and maybe where your blind spots are, that's your work, right? That's your sacred work and to keep that door open and then putting it out into the world. Some point, guys, we don't have control over that, right? Where it goes and where it lands. So um, I, again, for me, the inspiration always comes back to the characters themselves and, and reconnecting to them and loving them and, um, they existed here for me, they existed, you know, and that might be all they're going to do, but that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. I think that's great. I think like remembering how much you love the writing, like the getting it out in the audience part is a really exciting part of the job when things can get made, but we're in this because we love the writing. We love getting in there. We love being with our characters. And that's a huge part of the joy that comes with what we've chosen. So even if things don't necessarily make it to the steps or places you want it to, you still got to spend that amazing time with the characters writing. So I think that's helpful too. And it's just top of mind, so I'm gonna mention it, but I've been um, doing a lot of research on this amazing Harvard psychologist named Dr. Susan David. Uh, we featured her on another show I produced called Better Together that it's definitely an episode worth checking out, but her whole thing is talking about emotional agility. And she talks about how the negative emotions that rise up in us are actually very valuable and very important. And rather than like suppressing them, we should use them as data to point out the important values that we hold. So if you're feeling heartbroken over a lost project, that's okay. Allow yourself to feel heartbroken and let it point to the value that you hold, that you're a passionate, creative person who loves to share your work. That's a beautiful thing. So it's okay that you feel that way because it's pointing to a really important value that you hold. Um, so we can use our negative emotions as data. We don't have to use them as directives. She calls that emotional agility, and it's a really powerful tool, I think, especially for creatives. And allowing yourself to say, I feel sad rather than I am sad. Because you're a beautiful, full person with lots of emotions, and right now you feel sad. But that doesn't mean you are sad, because you are a person. Yeah, I heard once that jealousy is just an indicator of what you're not giving yourself. Yeah. Or what you want that you don't have yet. Mm -hmm. So it's just information coming in to you yeah, versus exactly. judge yourself. And I'm so horrible because I'm jealous. It's like, huh, that's interesting. I never thought I'd be jealous of that. Right. Um, Honestly, like inside out is that's kind of the thesis of that movie, right? The importance of the challenging emotions that we face. 
yeah, there's a gift in all of them, um, most of them. Um, so yeah, I I uh, I uh, I really come to the Facebook page, guys. Bring us your questions about quitting, or if you're if you're hitting a wall, we're here. We're gonna or the Gmail account. I'm gonna we're a little bit behind in answering those, but I'm gonna do that this weekend and and talk to you guys directly. So um, yeah. should we do the question of the week? Yes, let's do the question. Okay, this is a good one. <laughs> I love this one. Um, let's see, I'll read it here. It says, hi, Megan Lorian. Oh, this comes from Mitch Forrester. Um, I, I don't know where he's from. I'm sorry, but, uh, let's see. Hi, Megan Lorian. My question is this 12 weeks seems to be the standard for delivering a draft to a studio. How do you break down this 12 weeks to give yourself the right amount of time for each part of the development and writing of the draft? A huge fan of both of you. And thank you again for the, you are not alone vibes. You give out so amazingly much love, Mitch. Well, thank you. Um, uh, so 12 weeks. 12 weeks to write. Um, and I'm assuming think, that means you've already written an outline, right? Because the 12 right. weeks is actually to write the script, right? Yeah. Um, uh, my well, well, my yeah. process involves a lot of chips and crying, as I've said before, and not being able to write and then, you know, wasting time and doing research and taking, taking walks and ranting about how I can't do it. And then, you know, I write it in like the last week. Not really, you know, but that's what like, it feels like. It feels like, um, I procrastinate for 10 and write it in two. Uh, of right. course we don't, but uh, sometimes it feels that way. I do find, uh, yeah. I've heard that it's uh, certain kinds of brains will procrastinate before they jump off the board, but. Um, I have that brain. I have to be pushed to a certain limit. I always get it done, but I have to be pushed to a certain limit. I wish I had the kind of brain that could be like, these two weeks for this and these two weeks for this, and maybe I I'll get there one day. I always do schedule it that way. Of course. <laughs> but that just My calendar creates, is a beautiful thing. <laughs> that just creates stress that I'm not doing it. I mean, I was thinking about this because I knew we were going to do this question. And I think, you know, for me in general, and it's a very general thing, um, you know, I get myself the puke draft is like a week or two for the puke draft. Okay, I've got my outline. I've been an issue to go. I just puke it out. And if it goes off the outline, it goes off the outline. Maybe it needs to, right? Like you, you, you'll determine that yourself when you need to go out, out off outline or when not. Again, if you're somebody who never finishes, do not go off outline. If you're somebody who that's not one of your problems, go ahead, let it go off. See what uh, you might have to come back and go back to outline with what you learned. But I give about two weeks to the puke draft. I do try to take a couple of days away from it because you will not have any objectivity whatsoever yeah. to read it immediately. Um, and then I'll go in and analyze that puke draft and think about it and what I think works and what doesn't. And maybe I'll get depressed for a little bit. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, it doesn't work. Cause of course it doesn't. It's a puke draft. Um, right. sometimes I then go back and outline again because of what I discovered in that puke draft. Um, uh, and then, you know, for me, when I'm reading and analyzing or writing, um, there's so many things to be thinking about, right? Like if do you have a world and rules, I might just do a whole shift through the script thinking about the world and the rules and do they make sense? And maybe I've given it to people literally just to find that out. Like I'll give it to my husband. I just gave him our TV pilot because there's tons, it's world building. And I was like, do you understand this? And he was like, no. And I was like, shit. <laughs> Because everybody, the producer and everybody involved, we already know the world and rules. So they may not even be the best readers, right? Because they aren't brand new to it. And he was like, I don't get this. I don't get this. I don't get this. And I was like, okay, so this thing that we think it makes sense, it doesn't. So now I have to go back and do a draft just on the world and the rules. I think I also do a draft sometimes on relationships mm -hmm. to make sure that, especially for television, but for anything that the relationships are tracking and evolving and sparking, um, the main character's arc, just go look at that. Um, and then, um, you know, of course, theme, theme, theme. Why do I care? Why do I care? Is it emotional? To me, that's the most important thing of looking at this draft and going back over it and over and over it is the emotion and am I being brave and am I digging it out? And do I even actually now know what it is because it kind of went off track or I've lost the articulation of it or I kind of bailed on this scene and didn't really do it. Um, and there's so many balls in the air when you're writing the draft, right? To kind of keep going that you can kind of forget like, oh my God, I got so involved in the plot. I just, where's the right. freaking character in this script? So to me, it's not like I write a draft. I just go over and over and over it and again and again and again. And, yeah. um, you know, the one thing that I sometimes don't have time to do because I'm doing all that work that I really have to start making more time to do is the dialogue pass. And the dialogue pass, yes, because it's so it's snappy and, great dialogue, but also from a character point of view. My husband just told me that he did a script once where he took the three main characters 
and he he cut and pasted all the dialogue from each one into just their own document and just read it as a dialogue like is the dialogue is this a clear voice is it you know you know just is it great dialogue I thought that was such a great idea I think I'm going to do that as well um and then I was talking to my friend Jonathan on um who were writing this pilot together and he said dialogue to him is like fine French cooking. It's about reduction and condensing. It's about simmering and boiling, you know, boiling off things to get down into the concentrated, you know, wonderfully desired flavored um, base, mm -hmm. right? And that, I thought that was such a good image because at the beginning when you're doing your puke draft, first of all, everybody's going to be saying the subtext <laughs> because you're just trying to get it out. Right. And it's probably all going to be long, long, and there's going to be multiple, you're going to say the same thing like four different times and you don't even realize it, but it's that reduction down, reduction down from both the scene, but also the line. Right. And I thought that, that was a really good way to think about it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a lot of things, right. And now you have to give it to get notes and this is all in the 12 weeks right now you got to get notes and go again. And by notes, maybe might be your producer. It might Check be your husband. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of my process in that 12 weeks. I once had a, this isn't answering the question. This is like how not to do it. I once did a feature rewrite and they wanted act one to the midpoint in the first three weeks. And then they wanted from the midpoint to the end in the last six weeks, but I couldn't rewrite the beginning. And I was like, oh my God, I can't like the whole thing just like kept falling apart. And it was, and I kept rewrite. It was like, that's how you don't do it. No, <laughs> don't do let that. them don't let someone say like let's do you know act one and then act two b and then move through it like that because as you write it it will it will change and evolve and like grow like all the steps you're talking about meg and like you'll discover something like deep in the bottom of act two that you have to then thread back through so if someone's asking you to do that i would suggest uh, coming back with a different scenario <laughs> Uh, yeah, don't do that. That is shooting yeah. yourself in the foot. It's not, yeah. it's not, it's not paint by numbers. Yeah. It's an organic living thing. Right. And yeah. I understand that some producers or people you're working with, they want control over it. And it's like, well, welcome to artistry. No, yeah. like we, I, you need your chance to do your art and your art is the writing and it's all of it. Right. And it will shift and change. And listen, if you're going to change something really big, you might want to call the producer or whoever and say listen this is what's happening talk it out so that they're ready when they get the draft. yes yes <laughs> it's exactly. okay. like, be smart about it uh but uh you have to trust yourself and 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 the, and the horse you're betting on is yourself and i know that can be scary right because right. sometimes you're like well maybe if they read it they'll help me and if i'm going if it completely sucks and i'm going off like i can feel that need sometimes it's like no 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 mm -hmm. no because what you're really saying is let me help. I want, I need to be successful to make this successful because that story that I told just now is how I got rewritten, right? They didn't like what, I mean, it's like, you know, a writer friend of mine called me and said, hey, I'm working on this movie. I'm like, hey, I wrote that movie. Now you're rewriting that movie. That's great. But like that, so I, it wasn't successful. So, you know, you're fighting for the ability for you to be successful for the movie to be successful in order to be able to do the process that Meg you were just talking about all those passes all that thoughtful work as a piece and it's so. really ultimately your vision you're an artist it's a vision and that vision may be out of focus in places and they won't get it if you're giving it in pieces and they'll give you notes based on something they don't get yet and that's fine. Maybe that's you don't it. get it yet either, but you need to respect yourself and your process enough to say, I deserve and demand this demand. I, you, know, you have to decide what words you use. But for internally, tell yourself, you deserve and demand this space to do your work and your craft. And don't if just because you're scared and think you might suck is not enough reason to put, take those walls down necessarily, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So... Um, occasionally you will meet people the, the rare unicorns who can be in that muck with you and don't freak out when they read pages but it's super hard for other people not to freak out I mean you know, let's, let's give them the benefit of the doubt that they're just humans freaking out like it because they, they don't get it right um so definitely don't don't be giving it out piecemeal I really don't recommend that yeah um, neither do I <laughs> <laughs> lesson learned I've learned so many 
important Hollywood lesson since I've been writing here. So, but it also speaks to as you're writing the draft and you're starting to freak out because it's not working and it's dying in the middle. Okay, in that case, I might be like, okay, it just died. All the momentum died in the middle. I have to go back to Act One because the engine's off. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you got to keep going, even if it's literally big chunks to get to Act Three to know what the engine is. Like, like, am I writing towards something? Yep. Right, and then earn that end. You know, so it is a back and forth process of, of discovery and curiosity. And it is not going to be what the outline is. I am sorry, but it, it always evolves again. And that's what yeah. you want it to do. And you want to be the visionary. And just, I, I have found it's, I literally just said on the phone the other day. Yeah, I completely see that you, that's what you wanted. I, I just, I'm not going to be able to write that. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Like, that's great. But I, that's not because I could not, I didn't want to write a woman like that. You know, like, uh, again, that might be a movie, but I feel passionately about her in this way. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to write for you. Right. Yeah. And I understand if you're a younger writer, that's hard to do because you're trying to get on the board and you're, I get that. But really they're looking for a vision and yeah. they're looking for a voice and, oh, we're going to put on the Facebook page, an article from Vulture about a British writer. Yeah. So amazing. And she literally talks about going up into the mountain and crying for three days while she writes her first draft. It's amazing. So I can relate. <laughs> and she talks about how she gave up a million dollars for her script because they would give her no copyright. And she realized it was all just a scam. And she said no. And she is just owning her creativity, take it or leave it. And it's so hard to do. I'm, I'm not even saying I can do that, but we'll, we'll post it for you. Michaela uh, Cole. Michaela Cole. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I think I haven't yeah. seen her new show on HBO. It's like stunningly well, she has a show called Chewing Gum, first of all, that you need to watch. Right. But her new show on HBO is called May I I might I may destroy you. That's right. Thank you, Lorian. Yes. And it's like just like stunning. I think she's like with Phoebe Waller Bridge and her and Issa Rae, there's just like all these incredible female yeah. shows on it's just it's a, about it's being themselves and 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 yeah. owning and listen, you gotta own both sides of that, right? You gotta own the vision and you got to own the failure because it's all yours, right? Like, so I get it. It can be tricky, but um, I know we started talking about how do you do 12 weeks, but this is what we're talking about. <laughs> this all comes up in the 12 weeks, people. It all will come up. Yes. Well, that's our show. Yeah. Maybe Thanks, guys. For, yeah. yeah. Thanks for tuning in um, to the Screenwriting Life. We can't wait to be back with you guys soon. Uh, in the meantime, like we said, go to the Facebook, go to the YouTube feed. Please go to the Gmail and ask us your questions because um, we love hearing from you. Keep writing. Bye. Bye. From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network.